It's January here in Japan and it's cold, but it's an unusual year because there's no snow. Usually there's quite a bit of snow. Also, what I've made is a notebook with a Japanese kimono esque cover to it. If you would like to, please watch while I put it all together. On a link stitch, what you want to do is put loops in the holes on the first signature, except for the head and tail hole. You go from the outside, you go in the first hole at, at the head of the signature, and you come out the second hole from the head, and then you go back in the same hole, making sure to make a loop when you go back in. And then on the third hole from the head, you come out and you do a loop again. And then on the fourth hole, or the first hole at the tail, you come out and you tighten everything up, making sure you have two loops. And on the second signature, on the tail hole, you go in. You come out the second hole from the tail. And you go through the loop that you've made, and then back into the second hole from the tail. Then you tighten everything up, and then you come out the third hole from the tail. And you go through the loop again of the first signature, and then you go back into the third hole from the tail on the second signature, and then you come out the first hole on the second signature from the head. Then you come out, you go, you tie it off. When you go in the third signature, you tighten it up, and you go to the second hole from the head, you come out, on the right side, on the tail side of the link they've made between the first and the second signatures. You come out on the right side and you go behind the link. So you come out on the left side of the link and then you go under the thread that's coming out from the right side and you tighten it up. Then you go back into the second hole from the head and you go to the third and repeat. So what you're doing is you're coming out the right side, the tail side, and going underneath both the link and the thread to tighten it up, to link it up, and then going back in. When you go from head to tail, you circle back towards the head. When you're going from tail to head, you circle back towards the tail, and you tighten everything up as you go. On the last signature, you come out, you tie it off. You tie it off and make sure everything is nice and tight. When measuring the book covers, I measure the text block width and then I subtract three or four millimeters. I put that on the book board and cut it as accurately as possible using two different rulers for accuracy and the right angles, proper angles. And then I measure the height of the text block and add four millimeters. This gives me two millimeters at the head and two millimeters at the foot. And I spend a lot of time checking and making sure I've got the most accurate measurements I can. The old adage of measure twice, cut once is important. Also on this, you'll notice the corners of the text block are rounded. I've done that also with the book boards. I rounded them and cut them with scissors to match the rounding of the text block. Earlier last year, I backed some kimono cloth with Japanese paper and I've been sitting around and getting drier and drier, so I glued it to this book. First, I got the book blocks and I traced them and then I got a 15 millimeter gauge and I traced that around the book covers.
One thing I do when I casing a book is I put the spine piece on a piece of craft paper and make sure there's about 30 millimeters on both sides so I can glue the book boards to that craft paper and that makes for a nice alignment of the book board and the spine piece. And so when I put on the, the cover, when I case it in, everything is adjusted nicely. One problem I had with the kimono cloth was the Japanese paper was dry, especially around the edges, so it was coming off. I had to re-glue it back on, and then I had to make sure it stayed. And still, when I cased in, I still had to add a little glue here and there to keep it together. But mostly it worked out fine, and I'm glad I made the kimono book cloth. I need to make some more because this is the last bit I had, which is why I used it for this book. Perfect size. And then finally, I fold over the edge of the book cloth onto the book boards, crease it down as best I can, and proceed to case in the actual book with the book covers and the end papers. If you've enjoyed this, please check out other videos I've made and click subscribe and click like. And if you would like to, you can go over to teduotigawabookmakers.podbean.com and check out the podcast I make. In any case, thanks for dropping by and checking out my video. Thanks again.